In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I used a 10 year old bit of software to make modern art on my 3D printer. Let's get started. Welcome back to Maker's Muse, guys. So I was browsing open source software when I came across this bit of software from 2007 called Structure Synth. So it originally came out in 2007 by Mikkel Heidefeldt Christensen. I'm so bad at pronouncing names like that, I am sorry. But the last development was stopped in 2010. So it's been about seven years since this bit of software has been worked on. But I found it really, really interesting as it lets you build 3D scapes of objects using what's called Eisenscript. But I need to put this disclosure out. I am the last person on this planet that you should be taking coding or mathematics tutorials from. I pretty much failed maths in high school because I could never really see any application for it beyond just numbers on a spreadsheet. I'm very much tactile and tangible, which is probably why I got into 3D printing in the first place. But something that's always stood out to me and sort of clicked my interest was patterns in maths. But this bit of software lets you recreate patterns in three dimensions using its Eisenscript language. So let's jump over and have a quick look at it. All right, guys, so I fired up Structure Synth and I just want to go through the, uh, the most basic example that I was able to make. So again, absolutely suck at code, but this is my basic explanation of how Structure Synth actually functions. So I've set a max depth of 25, so that's 25 instances of an object. So you can have an infinite amount, I guess, but uh, I want to stop at 25 because I want the objects to be Stop, they want to stop at a size where they make sense for 3D printing. If you keep going, they're going to get infinitely small or infinitely large, depending on what your, what your rule says. So I've got a rule here, and basically what that rule is doing is offsetting in the X direction by 0.5, and then we're rotating. So I, did, I said before that we were rotating in the Z direction, but actually we're rotating in the X direction. And then size is changing by 0.95% each time and we're doing a box. So you can define it as a sphere or a mesh, but box is, I've stuck with boxes for most of my designs. So I'm gonna hit build and bam. So here we go. This is what we've got off that code in a nice red color. You can define color as well. I don't really care about color because um, we're 3D printing. It's gonna be the color that we print as. But for example here, if I wanted to change the offset from 0.5 to maybe 0.1 build see they're way much more into it actually the um the sizing is not keeping up with the offset so let's change the offset to like one instead build so there we go see it becomes a lot sort of taller steeper and we could even change the rotation from 10 degrees to i don't know something crazy like 45 degrees Ah, it makes a nice geometric shape. Of course it does, because it's going 45 each time. So that's like my basic level of how Structure Synth works. But you can do some crazy stuff. So this was a originally a example that I modified. And what this one creates is this, which is bonkers, right? <laughs> so these are all these different cubes. Oh, sorry, zoom is backwards to fusion. In space, and they're all doing these different things. So our rule one is setting, moving in the X direction one, it's rotating around the Z 22 degrees. So like small changes, like changing this to 15, for example, or yeah, 15 and building again, this changes the shape, not huge amount, but quite, quite noticeably. But some of the different aspects like rotation here and the instances here, we can change rotation here to maybe three build and you see it's sort of twisting a lot more now so what if we change to something massive like 15 <laughs> build wham and it's just crushing over itself in this sort of twisty chaos like a wave so you can already see how much fun it is to just tweak these codes and this Eisenscript language and come up with crazy shapes. Again, I know how to like reverse engineer. I'm very bad at doing things from scratch. Same with Arduino language. I can't write Arduino uh, code from scratch, but I can reverse engineer it. But say we wanted to export this for 3D printing now, it's tons of intersecting cubes. Like all these boxes have intersecting uh, parts. It's not a manifold mesh. So what we're going to do is to export OBJ, group by tagging, that's fine, okay. And I'm just gonna save that. 
Something of note as well is like when you export as an OBJ, you need to define .obj, otherwise it doesn't know what it is, it just, it's just a file. So wave.obj, obj, and save that, and that way it'll know what it is when we bring it into Mesh Mixer. So fire up Mesh Mixer and import, and then wave.obj, awesome. So yep, it's a, <laughs> a very unhappy model for 3D printing, let's put it that way. So we're going to go to edit transform, bring it up a bit, uh, maybe rotate it a bit, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do it, maybe like that, that might work. And then scale, like we need to work out what size it is. So I'm just going to go to analysis units dimensions. So it's currently, yeah, tiny. This is what I've noticed. Like, I think the one might be one millimeter. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. In the structure synth software, the units are a bit confusing. But yeah, like, you know, 15 height is tiny. So we really want that to be more like 60 height. Yeah, that's a more reasonable size. Done. And then finally, I was going to go to edit a line and I'm just going to translate only. So it's sort of over the bed, I guess. And then you have two options. You can now export this into your software um, and then try to print it as it is. It is a very messy object. Or you can try to use Make Solid in Mesh Mixer to fix it, which will work. I'm not going to do it here because it's very in labor intensive and you will lose those beautiful sharp edges, unfortunately, because the Make Solid will tend to round things over as it tries to overlay like a shrink wrapped mesh. Or you can try to export to the Mesh Lab cloud service, although for files like this where there's tons of cubes and intersecting shells, I found that it tends to fail, unfortunately. But I'm just going to export this, so file export, and then let's just call it wave, that'll do. So I'm going to fire up Slicer, because a lot of these prints were done on the Prusa i3 Mark II, which has its own Prusa Edition Slicer, and in my intersecting shells tests, I found that Slicer handled them very well. So let's add, and add wave 2, there we go. And then we can pretty much proceed to print this if you want it to be floating like that or you could also slice it in this software. I'm not going to do it because it's a bit labor intensive and also when I go to slice for G-code creation, it's also going to lag up a lot because Slicer is not as fast as Simplify 3D, but it does work pretty well. So let me show you some of the examples I've printed. So as you can probably guess, you can create insane objects in this bit of software. It's really loads of fun to use. I would just use the examples and then modify and hack them to create crazy shapes as I want. You can even change the random seed to get different results each time. It's lots of fun if you're into that kind of thing. But you've got this object, now what are you gonna do with it? So I think originally it was designed for simply creating these intense looking 3D uh, renders, you can render it, and it looks quite nice, but I want to try 3D printing them. So this is the simplest one that I came up with and it's basically a cube which I cut flat to give it a base that's shrinking in size and rotating in the Z direction to create this really neat staircase pattern that's increasing in the same increment each time. So this is a sort of this one of the simplest examples you could do using the Eisen script language and it's one I wrote myself, <laughs> one of the few ones I did. But the others, I sort of started with a, the example and hacked it to do what I want. So this was another one. It's a sort of, it creates a spiral by rotating smaller and smaller, creating that sort of shape, but it's got various instances as well. So it rotates these instances around as well as creating the spiral. And this one's a bit rough. I'll be honest, I was printing way too fast. And also I didn't like how random it is. Like you can easily create, depending on your angles that you choose, the, that your sort of interferences and instance angles that some of them may just not look very nice. So play around with it. And I tweaked this one a bit to create this one, which in my opinion is a lot nicer. So this is created in polyalchemy crimson filament. It's a PLA that's been modified with a really nice glossy texture. And it's printed at 200 micron layer height. And I tweaked this one, as you can see through the center there, it's a lot cleaner. Whereas with this one I did previously, it's nah, not as nice. So this is one of my favorites actually. It did need a lot of support, but Slicer handled it like a champ. And it's got those instances built up across to make it look really funky and it's got that nice shine to it. So it's an interesting challenge because you need to design something that has intersecting objects so it can print because obviously parts just floating in space 
aren't going to be able to be held together after the object's created, but you also need to design it without needing too much support materials. So my final one, I wanted to come create something that was simpler and more elegant. So I came up with what I call the void wave. So this is the void wave that I did in the Poly Alchemy Abyss black filament. And I think it looks awesome, to be honest. They did have support material here, but um, apart from that, it has a really nice finish. 200 micron layer height, again, printed using slicer. And it's got the sort of spiral, but I had to stop the instance count so it wouldn't go into infinity and become impossibly thin. This is my favorite one by far. So I, you could totally like have this in an art gallery. You could totally design things in this software and print them beautifully, large scale and then put them somewhere on display. I think there's no reason you couldn't do that. So I thought, okay, this is my favorite one. I've got this new SLA printer, the Moai SLA, that's currently on Kickstarter. Let's give that a shot. Let's try to print this one in SLA. How about that? So this is printed on the Moai SLA at 100 micron layer heights, and it's printed with no support material. Not even joking no support material, nothing. And it worked. Mind blown. The dirty secret that, that FDM printers don't want you to know, you don't actually need that much support in, in SLA, it's crazy. So this is the, the sort of glowy, radioactive looking resin that Mark sent me, and it is intense. The detail in this model is incredible. Yeah, it just goes to show like, how you can create these intense operations and these intense patterns using fairly simple rules in structure synth. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and my experiments in using structure synth. Again, I am not very good at maths. I admit this, I'm terrible at coding. I do things with my hands. I like CAD, I don't like code. So my grasp of Eisen script language is very poor at this stage, but please have a crack at it. Show me what you create on the at Makers Muse tag on Twitter. I'd love to see your reactions and maybe we can resurrect this awesome bit of software that seems to have been forgotten for the last seven years. If you enjoyed this video here guys on Makers Muse and you wanna see future 3D printing tips, tricks, reviews, crazy experiments like this, hit the subscribe button, it helps us out a huge amount. And also I wanna thank my Patreon supporters hugely for supporting the channel. Some of you may know that YouTube is in a big shakeup right now with ads and a lot of, a lot of ad uh, support being pulled out of the channel. So I do rely on you guys quite a lot. And I did put up pictures of what I was doing in this, uh, in this software quite a while ago for you on Patreon to check it out ahead of time. You get the behind the scenes footage and all of that. I really would appreciate your support if you're interested in supporting the channel through that. Look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later guys. Bye. Here's the latter half of the 20th century. A man has sent rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit. He has actually...